Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast, brought to you by Simply Physio, aimed at helping you live an enjoyable, fit, and healthy life in and around our community of Knoxville, Tennessee. And now, here is your host, Dr. John Mark Chesney. Stay healthy in Knoxville. So today we got uh, our guest is Carrie Wagner. She's a certified registered reflexologist and owner of Knoxville Reflexology Group. Uh, Since uh, 1995, um, she's currently pursuing her PhD in holistic nutrition from the University of Bridgeport and holds a master's in education in psychology from the University of Minnesota. Um, as well as a nutrition and exercise physiology degree um, from University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. So these uh, qualifications, coupled with more than a decade of clinical experience, make her uniquely able to offer safe and effective face, foot, and hand therapeutic reflexology through Knoxville Reflexology Group, providing a path to better health and specializing in foot and body pain relief and detoxification. Uh, Since 2008, Carrie has been an expert at functional blood nutritional analysis, helping many people with chronic conditions. She teaches the seven phases of uh, toxicity to all her clients and encourages everyone to do regular detoxification, healthy eating, and supplementation protocols to improve their blood work quickly. She has received extensive training in the areas of applied kinesiology, and muscle testing, auricular therapy, cold laser therapy, detoxification protocols, emotional release techniques, essential oils, facial reflexology, foot reflexology, functional blood work analysis, functional endocrinology, hand reflexology, homeopath, uh, Korean hand therapy, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy training, toe analysis, thyroid health, nutritional urine analysis, and her latest certification in thermography. Uh, Carrie loves uh, the knowledge that um, she um, equips her clients with uh, for healthy living. She's often heard on TV and radio, including the WBIR style show as a style expert on reflexology. She has written several articles for regional magazines, including Fresh Outlook Magazine, Celebrating Women and Natural Awakenings, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, and um, the list probably can, can go on and on. So, Carrie, uh, welcome to uh, the show. Glad to be here. So, um, so yes, you're obviously a wealth of knowledge. So I'm super excited about having you on the show. And I was um, kidding with her um, before we started recording that um, I'll probably have to cut her off because she can just go on and on um, with all that she knows. And I love talking with her because she's always bringing up new and exciting information that she's constantly learning just uh, um, as a student um, her personality type of always constantly finding more information so that she can help her clients so I'm um, really excited about having you on on the podcast Carrie glad to be here we love uh, to start the podcast as far as understanding uh, how you got into uh, the field of reflexology what drew you into healthcare. Um, and to take us on on that journey. So I got to Knoxville via Minnesota, via Milwaukee. And back in Milwaukee, I was doing some feet with some friends. And my boyfriend at the time was working on my reflexes for menstrual issues that I had. And I, we looked it up in a book and I got him this book and we were doing that. And it was helping me a lot. And I thought, well, there's something really to this. And didn't pursue it when I was in Minnesota at all. Uh, Got to Knoxville and was a teacher at Washington Academy. It was a private Christian school here in Knoxville. It's now closed. And I was the, golly, I was everything. I was the PE teacher. I was the elementary school science teacher, middle school science teacher, and high school anatomy, physiology, and biology teacher. And I've got students out there that would say, Miss Wagner taught us all of our bones and all of our muscles, like from third or fourth or fifth grade, whatever. And they would excel in their high schools and their colleges, and they would remember what I taught them. When I decided, uh, actually a student of mine, Brian Fricke, was in my class, in my biology class, and he loved the class. And one day, I don't know how we even got on the topic, we were talking about feet. 
And I, you know, because I taught PE also, mm -hmm. I started, you know, in the PE classes, if somebody was injured, I would take out their foot or ask them if I could, you know, do some reflexology on their foot. And of course they would let me, and I would teach them some of these techniques. And he said, Hey, do you know, there's a institution for this? I said, I didn't know that. So he, it's in Florida. It's the International Institute of Reflexology. And yes, I went there because being a teacher, I had off all the summers. So one summer in 1995, no, sorry, 1993, I went down to uh, St. Petersburg, Florida and went to the International Institute of Reflexology and started and got certified and all of that. And then I maintained the teaching and then that position uh, was decreasing and my practice started in 1995 in July. And so I was doing both. And as the school was going, you know, kind of getting smaller, my practice was getting bigger and bigger. And then I was working, you know, half time at the school and half time at my clinic. And anyway, that took about four years to transition through that. And then I ended up hiring someone to help me with the reflexology. I ended up with Dr. Richard Robinson down in the medical arts building in Knoxville on Main Street. And he had a medical weight loss clinic at the time. And I would hear all these people and see all these people coming in for medical weight loss. And he was very good at what he did. And I rented a room from him because I played handball with him and a bunch of guys. And I was really good, and I'd beat some of these guys. I was uh, nationally ranked at the time in handball. And so anyway, uh, he was my friend, and he let me have an office. I had one room, and he would bring me the clients. And I didn't really do marketing back then, but the happy clients told all their friends. And that's where my business grew. And then I had to have a staff person to help me because then we got two rooms. And then we moved to another floor in the building, Medical Arts, and then we moved down another building, another floor in that building. So we were there for a bunch of years. And then we moved to the Sunflower Health Store. Judy Robinson owns the Sunflower Health Store in that building, Dancer Studio on Sutherland. And I was there for many, many years and then ended up with um, having brain surgery in 2011. And I had a flood in my condo. And somehow walked around in my flip-flop shoes and contracted streptococcus viridian bacteria and it went to my brain. Yeah. And, um, I ended up, you know, they had to shave my head and cut my skull open and take out this 3.1 centimeter mass of a uh, streptococcus viridian, very, very almost deadly bacteria. And the doctors are like, uh, where have you been? How did you get this? And I said, well, hmm, uh, a couple months ago or, you know, whenever I was in California, they're like, nope, that's not it. And I said, well, my PEMF machine, I do therapy with this machine, it's 40 pounds. It was in the overhead compartment above my seat and I was pulling it down and it fell on my head because a lady hit my arm and it went on my head and it made a big bump there. That was in March of 11 and, you know, I survived that, whatever. And life went on. And so by October, when the flood happened in early October, six weeks later, the infectious disease doctor, Naro, mm -hmm. he said, we've incubated your blood and we know this has only been in you for six weeks. Where have you been? And I'm going, I don't know. Look at my phone. Look back to the day, the flood. So my condo had a flood and apparently I contracted this strep ridden from the water, I guess, and it made a 3.1 centimeter mass, and they had to take it out. So then I was on antibiotics and steroids and all of that, and I was on disability. So they told me two years, you know, you can't work, and you're going to be maybe not getting through this. We're going to do the best we can for you. And um, anyway, I'm a very big believer in essential oils and zeolites, liquid zeolites, and we contacted all the powers that be and found out what do we do, what's the protocol for this. It was kind of a new thing. And they all told me, okay, every hour on the hour, you're taking these detox drops and you're using these essential oils and you're doing this as this. And I did everything. And so I taught while I was in the hospital. I couldn't talk. I was aphasic. So, you know, I talk a lot. And so that part of my life when I didn't, I couldn't say anything. I had to write everything on a clipboard. I couldn't talk. I was not able to, I, I'm not stupid, but I couldn't say what I wanted to say because the part of the brain where the... Uh, infection was where they had to remove things. That's the speech center and parotid lobe, and it, it yeah. So, but I was supposed to be kind of you know incapacitated for about two years, and within 
mm, less than six months, like four, I was pretty, pretty good to go. Mm. And I'd be driving down the road, talk to my mother on the phone. And she goes, whoa, where are you? Is that a car? You're hearing, you know, I'm hearing. I said, yeah. She goes, well, who told you you could drive? I was like, I don't know. I just started to drive. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and anyway, so I then worked for, um, or worked with the Tennessee Sports Medicine Group, John Cruz and Claus and all of them. So they allowed me to use one of their little rooms back there. And I set up my business there and worked on, cause I couldn't really talk still. I could work. I knew what I was doing, but I couldn't talk. And anyway. is that where like, um, I know that's um, doing different types of detox as part of your practice, but it sounds like yes. that Thank grew God out of I did your that. own experience. Oh, yes, okay. totally. And the PEMF machine that I use, that saved my life as well. I've got several things that not one thing that I can pinpoint helped. I mean, yes, I took the antibiotics. You know, yes, I did the steroids because I had to shrink the, the abscesses, what it was, uh, in order to do the surgery. So they removed it safely. But no, I did all of these protocols on myself. And I believe that's why I got quickly the results and healed up faster than the average person would have if they would have even done it. Because they, they said the type of bacteria that I had was a stage three out of five. And so five, you're dead. And three is not very good. Mm -hmm. And so the cell level you know, had to go down. So every day they take your blood. I was at UT Medical and they did a fabulous job. And... um I got the results. When I walked out of the hospital, I was there for, I don't know, over two weeks and looked at my blood work every day because I read blood work on people. So I looked at my own. I said, well, how did I do? How, do, how was I doing when I got here? And it was very high, high white blood cell count, um, you know, and near death. It was really high. But so did you start incorporating this, the, your own kind of protocol in the hospital or? Yes. I made my, Yeah. <laughs> I made my friends bring me my essential oils and bring me all my stuff. I lined up all my things and all the nurses were like, what are you doing? And I had to like, of course, tell them what I'm doing. I said, I'm doing this, you know, and do it. Otherwise I'm leaving. In fact, when I was in the ER the first night when I got there, I couldn't talk. And the guy comes out and says, well, you have a brain tumor. And I got out of the bed. I was going to leave the room. And they're like, Carrie, stop. What are you doing? I said, get me out of here because you people don't know what you're doing. I know what my blood work says. I just ran it. I know I don't have. There's no way. They said, well, we see a tumor up there. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a tumor. It was a, a abscess of, you know, whatever. But still, I was about to leave that place because I thought, mm -mm. So I appreciate medical. I understand it. And it's good. We need to have surgeons and all that. I'm thankful and grateful for the surgeon that sure. worked on me. But there's other ways. And I'm, yeah, proof of that. And... I'm not backing down because <laughs> I'm alive to tell my story. So, so yeah, so it sounds like you almost kind of um, backed into reflexology. I mean, there must have been um, uh, some way that you were, you know, wired that really fit with your own personality type and um, getting into the field of reflexology. Um, would love for you uh, to tell for our listeners um, what exactly is, reflexology. So reflexology is a study, science basically, of the pressure points that are on the bottoms of your feet, hands, there's iris in the eye, there's uh, face points, and there's ear points. I'm also a very good ear reflexologist. Those points access the brain. So we're looking at the central nervous system from your spinal cord, those spinal nerves that go to the peripheral nerves, and then where they end, that's the reflex. So reflexes don't really exist if you're going to look at them, you know, anatomically speaking, under the microscope. They're really not there. It's a reflection of the pressure that's put upon them that the brain picks up that stimulation. And so what I do is I kind of overstimulate the reflex and then let off and let it relax. So we overstimulate that reflex slightly beyond what it's already there. So if you think about the reflex as a like a bell-shaped curve – and the pain point is at the height of the top of that bell, that, that top. And that's like the most pain that the person can endure, let's say. So when we stimulate that, we want to go just a little more than that, that you can handle. I'm not going to hurt you. But then as we let off and it relaxes, then that's the brain going, okay, relaxation. So we heal when we relax. And babies grow when they're sleeping. And humans, adults, we go grow and repair. I'm sorry, we repair when we're... Uh, more relaxed. So this whole therapy 
puts your body in a state of over relaxation. So we're giving you a, a lot of, you know, hits on your reflexes and they respond to the brain and because the, the brain is always sending signals down to the nerves through the spinal cord. If they didn't, you wouldn't be here. So what I'm trying to do is get that response back from the reflex, be it the hand, ear, face, foot, back to the brain. And the brain's like, oh, okay, it's less intense than it was before. So that's basically it in a nutshell. When I understand you incorporate um, other pieces into your practice where maybe the traditional reflexologist would do what you just described, right? Probably, but, yeah. Um, and um, with your practice, um, now there's other pieces to it too that you use to complement reflexology. And uh, maybe even for our listeners, like, um, like if somebody's getting started, um, is there a process that you take somebody through that you're looking at to help determine like what um, what particular piece of your offerings do do they need or would they benefit from? Well, we do a full evaluation and treatment on the first session. That's usually about an hour and 15 minutes or so. So we're doing hand reflexology, which is very similar to the foot reflexology piece. So all the you know eyes, ears, nose, all the sensory organs are larger reflexes in the fingers than they are in the little stubby toe. So if you've got, you know, eye challenges or ear challenges, it's easier to work on your fingers than the toes. So we do the hands and then of, you know, all your internal organs are in the hand as well. And then, you know, the wrist for the hips and the different parts. So it's exactly like the foot, only it's smaller and a little more precise. And then I work on the ears and the ears are like embryology. So it's like an upside down embryo in your ear. So it's your body upside down. So your head is down at the ear lobe, and then the cartilage is where the spine is. So your whole vertebrae is in there. All your internal organs are kind of in the, you know, center part of the ear. And then the hips and the back and all that is also in the ear. So I can find a lot of things in the ear, and that's easy to do. So if you have a problem with a body part and you can't get your shoe off in the middle of the day or whatever, you got your hand available all the time. Your ear is always usually available too. And uh, then there's some face points. And I'm, uh, I think I'm the only one right now certified in the state of Tennessee. Five years or so I've been doing this, the five levels of the face reflexology. So I do, you know, analysis of the face. So we give you charts for all these things. And I'm a teacher, right? So I have to teach my clients because I don't really want to see them every day or even every week. <laughs> I want to teach them enough so they can do this kind of stuff at home. So the first session is quite evaluative, but it's also a treatment. So they're going to get their hand, they're not a foot, not a hand chart, but a, we're going to give them a foot chart, an ear chart, and a face chart that they can do these same points. So, you know, if you have a knee issue, let's say, there's a point on your hand for your knee. Is it your right knee? It's your right hand and your right foot. So is it lateral? Is it on the side? Is it in the back of the knee? Is it the front of the knee? What part of the knee? Above the knee? Below the knee? The whole thing can be found reflexology-wise on your hand. Then we go to your ear. Well, there's an ear point that has the knee reflex in it. So we find that point. And now what I've been offering, it's really kind of cool, these little magnets. And you can slap a a, a piece of the magnet in the back of the ear and a one other one in the front of the ear, and they sort of, you know, magnetize each other, mm -hmm. and they're little. So I can work that point for, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, but you can take that home and put that magnet on for hours of a day. It will yell at you, and it will go, okay, take me off now because I can't handle this anymore. What it's doing is, again, overstimulating that reflex, over-relaxing it over and over. So the, the body's like, okay, I'm done with this, take it off, and then it's helping that body part respond. Same thing with the face. On the face for the knee, that's under the cheek. So if I know exactly how that hip, you know, responds, is it really the knee? Maybe, maybe not. It's probably your back first, then it went to the hip. Now it's down your IT band. Oops, now it's in your knee, <laughs> right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I see in my clinic. It's like, we don't really work on the problem area. We may, but that's usually rare. Usually it's what caused that body part to respond. We go back up the chain of command. Some is that hard for um, some clients, maybe new clients to understand or to like, you know, because like you said, reflexology isn't your traditional like Western medicine mm -hmm. um, of 
focusing on, you know, where the pain's at and Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, you know, you're treating, you know, the reflexes, which, um, maybe with some people who haven't had, um, don't, don't understand it would be more confused by it. I mean, do you have some clients that kind of come in on the fence and what is it that helps like once you finish that they, they're them believers? Well, I've got a chart in my office and it's a hieroglyphic type chart from a Egyptian physician's tomb. And there's things on there like essential oils and, you know, things they did on their heads and whatever. They had hands. So they have two men sitting there getting hand reflexology. One's giving and one's receiving. And the other ones are doing foot reflexology. One's giving, one's receiving. And the slogan or the quote there on the bottom says, please don't hurt me. And the therapist says, oh, no, I will work so that you praise me. And so it's working to the point where the person can handle it. And then with my job, you know, I'm trying to teach them, I just did this for you. And, you know, if you have a partner that wants to come in with the session, watch me. You can do this yourself at home. And I highly recommend families to come and, you know, husbands and wives, whoever to come to watch and learn. And then I chart you and then I chart, you know, the spouse and you all can do this yourself at home. So there's a lot of things you can do yourself at home. And, you know, in the middle of the night, don't call me. <laughs> Pull your chart out and work on your own issue, you know. So if people are, you know, thinking, oh, it's going to hurt or I don't want to do it or I don't have time to do my own homework, you know, you're not going to do your own level like I would because there's something in us that won't let us hurt ourselves, right? So you know, and I don't want to do that either. But the point is, if you don't get the flow, what I'm doing all day long is increasing blood supply and nerve supply to that issue part. And if you don't have blood supply, you have ischemia, or you have lack of blood flow, you know, we do thermography. So we're looking at the body through autonomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, looking at what part is too much heat, inflammation, or not enough heat, no flow, through an area that doesn't, you know, get a lot of work or it's been injured or whatever. So we're trying to improve that blood flow. If you have blood flow, the blood carries the oxygen and the nutrients. You have to have that for healing to happen. So that's why I do a lot of po- uh, preoperative care and postoperative. So people come in, we're trying to avoid a surgery if possible. Sometimes it's inevitable. Surgery is good if you need it. But then after surgery, get in and, and come in and get your chart done because you want to have that blood supply or have your family member work that for you if you can't. You know, it's really, really healing, really, really, yeah. Well, I love um, your perspective, too, of um, teaching and training the clients to understand their body on a, a greater level, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I you know love doing with my clients, too, is, is empowering them to say, hey, you know, I know some things, um, but let me teach you what I know yes. because I don't want you just dependent Relying. on needing me to fix you. Right. Like I can help you get out of this, but my biggest asset is teaching you right. so that if something goes off, you know, goes wrong, that you have some tools in your own tool belts yes. um, to help yourself. Right. It reestablishes range of motion and, you know, people are doing things that they weren't able to do which is really exciting. Mm-hmm. You know. We're going to take um, a quick break, uh, hear a word from our sponsor. And when we come back, um, we're going to talk some about um, Carrie's research and her special, uh, specialty into um, thyroid uh, conditions. Um, and also hear about some other things that she's, some, some neat things she's doing with um, thermography. Uh, let her talk about that and how she's incorporating that into her practice as well. Stay Healthy Knoxville is sponsored by Simply Physio, a physio clinic that equips and empowers you to live your life to the fullest so that you can enjoy the things you love to do and be the person you are made to be. Simply Physio specializes in helping people get back to a healthy and active lifestyle, living free from pain and medication and avoiding unnecessary surgery. Stay tuned until the end of the episode to receive a special gift from Simply Physio and enjoy listening to the rest of the episode. Well, uh, welcome back to the show, um, Carrie. Where we uh, left off, uh, going into um, your research and your area of um, study. Um, I know a little bit about it, but tell our our guests, our listeners, um, about your your current research and uh, who uh, the type of people you're looking for for your research right. too. Okay, I'm transferring to the University of Bridgeport, and I'm studying holistic nutrition 
with an emphasis in autoimmunity. So what I've seen since 2010, when we got our thermography camera, was everybody who comes in, me and everyone, has some autoimmunity going on. And we, not everybody, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of people... Um, Probably feels like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, a high number. So basically, if people, the people who don't have it are the ones who are really, really healthy, working this. They're doing their detox. They're doing healthy eating, eating mostly organic. I mean, really high-level kind of folks that don't show up with a marker. It's really interesting. So we're looking at the thyroid area, the throat, the front of the thyroid, looking at is there a cooler place in the neck area compared to the other area. So you're looking at it with a thermography. Thermography camera. Can you tell just our listeners what, what is thermography? Thermography is digital infrared thermographic imaging. So it's a camera that's near you, but nothing's touching you. You can do thermography on a knee, the back, the chest. You know, ladies come in for breast thermography as opposed to mammogram. We're not saying don't do a mammogram. I'm saying this is a safer very, you know, less expensive alternative to doing that. And even Dr. Mercola and Dr. Christiana Northrup and some of these are recommending doing thermograms every year and maybe doing a mammogram every second year or whatever as a follow-up. Thermogram is very safe, very effective. So we're looking at the body in heat patterns. So the autonomic nervous system will show through the sympathetic nervous system heat. If it's too hot, the camera will pick up that heat as white or red is a little cooler than that. Then it goes to orange and then yellow and then green is kind of what you want as a kind of a goal. Uh, if it's cooler than that, it turns lighter blue and then dark blue and then black. So black from our perspective is ischemia or no flow at all or cancer. Hmm. So I'm not a cancer doctor. I'm not a doctor. So I can't diagnose anybody for anything. Don't hear me say that, but we can tell you exactly, and the clients come in, and we're sitting down with them the same day, looking at the same thing that they're seeing that we see, just the raw data, basically. And then we send that to the doctors for interpretation. So the medical interpretation comes back as to what does this all mean? You know, does your gut have inflammation? Do you have gluten intolerance? Does your spine need a chiropractic adjustment? You know, are you holding so much heat, white hot heat in a muscle group that needs, you know, dry needling? Mm -hmm. or What's going on with your thyroid? So yeah, if you have cooler areas, that just means signifying there's a problem here, you know, or let me back up a minute because the doctors who read for us want a study. Everything's a study in the medical world, right? So you take a set of pictures and it tells a story, but what they want to see is three months later, what is that body doing? Because they know that one cancer cell becomes two cancer cells every 90 days. If you come back in 90 days or thereafter and something has changed, we can pick it up. It takes five years for cancer cells to get to be a million cells. That's when they can pick it up with a mammogram. We've had people come in four years or less seeing full-blown four-stage cancer when they've been to the you know routes to get their mammograms done regularly and mm -hmm. they missed it. They didn't really miss it because they wanted to miss it. They missed it because it just wasn't there. Their equipment didn't see it in the way we're looking at it. So we're looking at the body from a perspective of what's going on. Where is the heat? Why is the heat there? And then why is it cool? Why are you not getting blood flow there? What's going on with that immune system or whatever? So we're alerting people. So we say early detection saves lives. Mm -hmm. You know, we have October's the big breast health awareness month. We're doing a special right now, started in July, and the, it ends in August, August 31st, for anybody who really wants to do their thermogram before October uh, to come in, come and see us. We're getting a 20% discount for everybody who comes in this month and next month just to beat the crowd, beat the rush, so to speak. Um, yeah, so basically, if people know this information, they can do something about it. Whatever the doctor says to do from the report, change your diet. You know, get off brains and, and uh, gluten if you need to. Uh, go to the chiropractor, get these things taken care of way ahead of something. So, you know, we've prevented a lot of things. And all the uh, clients that we do have that have had breast cancer come back in for that peace of mind. They want to, you know, get their scans done just for their, just to see what's going on. You know, are you getting better? Are you getting worse? You know, what's going on? Are you cheating on your diet? Mm -hmm. Are you doing the things? You know, are you taking your detox drops? What are you doing for your health? 
So we can see all of that. It's really pretty fun. So when you're using the thermography for the thyroid, what are you looking for there at the thyroid? Okay, so in the back also, there's a T1, T2 syndrome we, t- we were uh, taught in school, and it signifies that there's a challenge with your immune system. So something's going on, again, in that T2 area in the spine and near the that vertebrae, it's cooler. And it's only cooler in people who have an autoimmune challenge. Again, it's the healthiest of the healthy that don't have that. Mm. And I have, you know, we have, you know, young girls come in with their moms and, you know, they want to get theirs done and they're 12 or they're 14. Well, when we do their throat area, they have an autoimmune marker. It's crazy. And then the youngest one I've had is a little two-year-old child who came in with her babysitter and she was eating her little uh, goldfish crackers full of gluten. (laughs) And, you know, the kid is too full of autoimmunity going on in her throat and in her back. Both points, the front and the back of the thyroid, were completely a too obvious autoimmunity. So, and when you see um, when you see a marker, is um, the interpretation of that means that there's nothing that's being expressed yet? Like Possibly, right? So what? I, so yeah. So we alert people to say, hey, you need to go to your doctor and get some blood work done. Mm -hmm. And let's look at that because the markers we're looking at are, and this is what my PhD research study is about, you know, what are the things that are triggering that immune system? Are you eating the gluten? Gluten is one of my number one things. So the top three things that I tell my clients is get off gluten, get off glyphosate for sure, because that is a trigger and it causes your immune system. Where Where do people pick up glyphosate? Glyphosate is from Roundup. So that would be put on the wheat at the growth stage, right? And then it's just in the product. So the flour and the bagels and the pizza crust and the whatever, the sauce, it's gluten is in everything. And, and you've got to read labels out there because if, if it says gluten-free, it is. By law, it has to say that. If it doesn't say gluten-free, there's probably a lot of gluten in it. Mm-hmm. So get off of all of that. And then the other triggers are if you've been exposed to any heavy metals, you know, aluminum, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic. Those are the top five. Uh, in our study, we're asking people to do a urine test, go see what's what that level is for you, and then do my protocol for like 90 days or so, and then retest. So they come in, they get a thermogram, and we're offering this too. We can invite your uh, clients to come. Anybody who knows anyone who has an autoimmune condition, and it doesn't have to be Hashimoto's, anything. There's 206 that I've studied, and there's probably more now, that are active autoimmune disorders or diseases going on in the body. It's an attack in your immune system. What are you doing to cause your immune system to attack itself? So auto means self and immune system. So we're either eating something or ingesting something or exposed to something that's coming in to attack our immune system, or... We're kind of doing it ourselves on the emotional side of this. So the third trigger is the stress level that people have. Mm-hmm. So your adrenals are stressed out. You live in stress. You've had a you know a trauma or some kind of car accident or you know life challenge or divorce or whatever. Whatever that trigger is, if you've allowed that to attack you emotionally, you're attacking yourself emotionally possibly, and that's a trigger that trips your immune system also. So we also do emotional release therapy with a cold laser. It's a 3A cold laser. It's a 635 nanometer wavelength, so so it's very safe. You don't need glasses or anything special. We put it at the back of the brainstem area, and we ask you some questions. We do applied kinesiology, muscle testing, and ask your body a question. Uh, You don't even have to tell me anything. You better think it and feel it, though, at the same time. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And we just ask, you know, what do you think about this condition? Or what do you, what, you know, what was going on when you were 10 or whatever? And they go, oh, ooh, this happened, whatever. And they think about it and then they remember it and their body picks up on that. And then we keep that laser there, it's a cold laser light and, you know, no heat or anything like that. But it helps the body put that light in and then they release the negativity, the, the, the issue. They, I, t- I coach them through a breathing uh, thing and we just, let all that go through a series of questions and it really, really works. And it's pretty much, it's what we call it is conscious memory release. So these are things that you know, you said that, they said that, they did that, you know, you were aware of it at any age and you still have it. 
and you really don't need it anymore. So we coach people to get rid of that. Okay. And that's a huge part of this autoimmunity question that doctors are not looking at every day. And I'm seeing it every single day. Now, as um, you mentioned, uh, as far as your protocol, so is what you just described the pot- protocol or tell us a little bit about so the protocol, how, how you treat with Yeah, with so the thermogram protocol. tells us that you have it. Mm-hmm. We send you to the doctor to get the blood work, bring that in. And we look over all the, you know, markers in the thyroid, you know, complete panel basically. And then which one of those are out of range? I don't care if you have one or all 15 out of range. If you have one marker, you qualify to be in my study. So what I'm trying to do is put you on the, the protocol, which is the detox drops, which is the clear detox pro, which is a liquid clinoptilolite zeolite solution, which is like a 15,000 ne- negative charge solution that goes in your water or your orange juice or your coffee or whatever, and you drink it. So typically you take 10 drops twice a day or some variation of that. And that's a daily thing. It's tasteless. You don't even notice. But what it does is it attracts, it does a cationic exchange to go in your body, pick up all the positively charged things. So you've got heavy metals, you've got toxins, you've got, you know, whatever you've been exposed to in the body causing a challenge causing some, you know, degeneration or whatever. And it goes in there and it grabs it and it cleans it out through the kidneys. So out the urine, some out the colon, out the breath, you know, out your sweat as well. And so when those toxins leave the body, you have better results. Mm -hmm. So we have toxins in our fat. So a lot of people who are heavy have a lot more toxins than people who are more slender. We have toxins in our bones and we have toxins in our brain. So I do a whole treatment protocol for organic weight loss and we're using the same protocol so you don't have to do the thermogram and all that part but you want to do the drops for sure with your diet your diet plan that is we recommend eat right for your blood type so if you don't know what your blood type type is please go find that out and then we give you the list so we're giving you the fruits the vegetables and the meats to or the proteins rather to go ahead and Start eating how your body wants to eat and then doing the detox at the same time. And if you need some supplementation for, you know, whatever is off in your blood work, we can supplement with that. And then mostly we're just, you know, weighing the people come in, they weigh on the scale and we're looking at what is their BMI, what is their body fat percentage, what is their visceral fat. You're talking about the more your weight loss program now. Yes, yes. So uh, this is different than your the protocol, the protocol for the thyroid. Well, it's, very similar. similar. Yeah, okay. very similar. So people, I take every client as a person with their own issues. So it doesn't matter where you've been. It's where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? How far do we, you know, how fast do we want to get you there? So we just look at what are all the things that are off in your blood work. So if you're off and you got, you know, two or three things, we're going to, you know, fix those up first. If you've got 20 things, it's going to take you a little bit longer. But yeah, it's really safe and very fun and very easy to do. And people, so we we have the people come in and put them on the protocol and then make them come back in seven days. So we redo the testing and then they're getting, you know, better weight loss and better sleeping and better relationships and all these things are changing. It's, it's really fun. So the, the food list is not hard. It's all, and you want to eat as organic as possible, of course, and then drink your water, half your body weight in ounces a day, Mm -hmm. sort of standard. So the, um, the reflexology isn't part of that? That would be a bonus. That's, that would okay. be, yeah, that's different. I mean, you're right. So I have different people come in, uh, the pain clients come in because they're in pain. Mm-hmm. And then we say, well, what do you need? Maybe you just need the pulse electromagnetic field therapy machine or just reflexology or, you know, we do acupressure now. Dr. Mayor Barot is in our clinic and he's amazing. He's from India and he is an acupressure uh, therapist as well as whole body reflexology, just like what I do. And so we work together on a lot of these people for pain. And But there's a lot of people who have autoimmunity as well. So we just take them where they're at and kind of fix up what is their what is their issue that's screaming the loudest and get them into better health. Nice. And then um, so with, um, with your research, it's a 90-day, so you do a, a, a pre-thermography uh, uh, test and get all the results from that and then go through um, the diets um, mm-hmm. based on their blood type, mm-hmm. um, the drops for detoxification. Um, and, and then emotional release if they need that. Okay. Yeah. And then most do. Yeah. And then after 90 days, 
You do a re-scan. A retest, right. So we want to look at the thermogram, what has changed. Mm-hmm. And you can have a lot of change if you're doing your protocol right in the 90 days, which is really fun. And a lot of our people are noticing that their thermogram marker in their thyroid was like a big spot. And now it's like half. And you want it to be gone, but it's it's still affecting the blood work. So then the blood work changes also. And that's where, you know, thermogram is not going to be noticed in the medical community because it's a little more subjective and there's not a CPT code for it and there's not insurance that's going to pay for it, right? So it's just an evaluative tool right now. So looking at the blood work, that's where the rubber meets the road because we are changing people's or they're changing their blood work by doing this protocol every single day. And they come in, like I said, the seven days they're coming in, they're, they're looking from the scales point of view. We also do a brain test. So it's a visual contrast sensitivity. So it's like a eye chart, like you would go to at your eye doctor basically. And you're looking at these lines on this chart. And if you see the lines, that means your brain is picking up those lines. If you can't see those lines, it's because that brain part is toxic. And then you've got toxins from, you know, the fat to the bones and now it's in the brain. You got a challenge and we're not going to just do a brain cleanse on you. You don't start that way. You work on, you know, the liver, the kidney, the different parts and get these toxins out. And that's going to shift immunity. So we're looking at changing the world here, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, my theory is that everyone, me, you, and everyone is autoimmune. Prove you're not, is what I say. Prove it. Get in my camera, you know, come in here, get your thing, look at the blood work, figure out what's going on with that brain test. Prove it. This may be um, kind of a bigger question, um, which, you know, have, you know, with yourself working in this area of um, autoimmune disorders. And do you have any thoughts on why we're seeing this explosion of autoimmunity yes. here in yes. the recent? I'm a big believer in Niels Yard remedies. And uh, Peter Kindersley, the owner of the company, came back when Obama was the president with some people, they were talking about not allowing Monsanto in 08, I want to say, to get in touch with our farmers and do this glyphosate stuff with the Roundup and put that stuff on our crops. And, oh, it was Prince Charles. That's who I was thinking of. Prince Charles came with Peter Kinnersley to the to the Senate or to the, sorry, to the Congress, I guess it was, and begged them and said, don't do this. We, as a country in Europe, did not do Monsanto. And they begged to not do it here. And they said, "Mm, we're not so interested in this. And so now we have glyphosate on all the wheat. You can eat wheat in Europe. You can't eat wheat in America anymore. I'm sorry. You can't do it. Now you can take a gluten flam pill, which I have those at my office. That's cheating in my opinion. I pop those every once in a while myself if I happen to eat something that has gluten in it, if I don't know. It just neutralizes? Well, there's three parts of gluten. So everybody, and this is interesting, I just wrote a paper on this, the three parts of gluten, everyone is sensitive to one or two or all three. I have yet, and I've been doing this since mm, 2005, check on every client that walks in, find out which parts of gluten are you sensitive to. Well, guess what? All three parts are in that bagel, in that pizza, in that, you know, ketchup. It's in everything. You can't take out one part. The pill that we give is neutralizing the gluteomorphin, the transglutaminase enzyme, and gliadin. So like I'm one part sensitive, so I can't, so I take a pill when I have to eat gluten. Mm. Yeah. And I say I, when I have to eat gluten, cause I'm like going to starve if I'm not going to, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't want to choose that as a food anymore. Sure. It's in the gut. We see it in thermography. You can see it in their gut from the, from the scans. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Well, um, be sure if anybody's listening and is interested in this study, we'll um, be sure to yeah, have give Carrie us a give uh, her contact information here at the end of the episode. But if um, a little bit, if somebody was interested, um, are you um, taking so many clients um, for research? Uh, well, for the research, it's, or? it's open right now. I mean, okay. you know, we want eighty clients to be in the study. I would love to have you know two hundred, sure, because people drop off, whatever. So we're looking for statistical significance. So we say ninety days of being on the protocol. But Dr. Nicholas Sirikos Carpanos, who's the inventor of the Clear Detox Pro Drops, he says if we achieve statistical significance before the 90 days, we're done. We're calling it a day. We're writing the paper. We're pu- you know, publishing it in, in, in all the places. So, yeah, 
We'll, we'll take you. And, and actually, there's other studies going on, too. So there's some heart studies. There's some avid athlete, you know, exercise studies, um, the heart studies, and there's a sleep study. Different ones. People have different issues. So uh, we can hook them up to other studies, not just mine. Mine's going to be like the key study, though, of this for this product. I know we're getting close to the end of our time here, but would love for you just to maybe briefly, we've mentioned a little bit about uh, the PMF, but if you just explain to sure. the listeners exactly what that is and, and how that incorporates into your practice. Mm-hmm. We got that in 2008, and it's a pulsed electromagnetic field machine. It's a 19,200 Gauss strength North Pole magnetism. So we have a table pad that you lie on in our office, and it's kind of like a ping-ping pulsing type thing that's underneath your whole body. And I muscle test to see which of the different 13 areas of your meridians are blocked. So if you've got a blocked meridian in one of the different parts on the on the head or in the adrenal points or the gonad points or the stomach or the chest, whatever, and you open up when I do the muscle test, you are blocked and your brain is not on. And we're calling it brain pathway reset. So we reset those um, pathways in a minute with that machine. So we do a minute on one adrenal, a minute on the other adrenal, a minute on, let's say, your stomach point, whatever. And we can put your brain flowing again through that whole point. And then if you don't have those points on or working well, you're going to have other challenges. So we can do all this therapy and all this stuff, but if your brain is not on on with it, you're not going to have the best result. So we want the best result for every client that comes in. So we do that first. Then we do the foot reflexology, hand, face, feet, ears. Yeah. Gotcha. And I've, I've been on Carrie's PMF machine and, um, yeah, it is a different experience. It doesn't really hurt. Um, but, um, it's, it's kind of an odd way relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's a ping ping. It's like some loops, you know, some butterfly loops that go around your knee or your hip, or you put one on your shoulder or we hold it on the head. And we had some lady balls, uh, players come in and they would put it on their head and, you know, uh, or on their back after a game or whatever. So it's a a wonderful piece of equipment. I mean, it's it's fantastic. So one minute on that machine is the same equivalent to two minutes in the gym. So you're like, you know, getting a lot more uh, blood flow, nerve supply through the body, and you're lying there. So you're not moving. It's not like you're working out in the weight room. Mm -hmm. It's you're just, you know, relaxed. And it's giving you that. So we've done uh, pre-thermography and then do a treatment with reflexology, and then do a post, sorry, I said that wrong, a thermogram, take a picture of what's going on, Sure. do the PMF, do the reflexology, and then do a post thermogram at the end of the session to see what, it if changed. anything, has changed. Oh, my gosh, it blows your mind. It's awesome. Nice. Well, um, well Carrie, I know we could um, keep going on. I want to have um, a few other questions here that I like to ask all my guests as far as um, wrapping up. Um, since you've, uh, what, you've been in Knoxville for how long? 1992. 1992. So if there is anything, I like to ask my guest if there's something on your bucket list, uh, maybe a Knoxville or East Tennessee, like a local thing that you haven't been able to experience or, or enjoy, but uh, you want to soon. Mm-hmm. Well, I love to golf. I don't have enough time to do it, but I love to golf. So there's a few courses that I haven't played here. So I would love to experience that. I also used to work at the county, Knox County. And I was one of the staff members at the time that was helping with the Greenway development back in the day. We're talking like 91, 92-ish, that okay. time frame. And, of course, I left the county to start my business. But I work. I went to one uh, Greenway on Third Creek. And I know there's more, and I don't even know how many there are. I want to, like, try out all the Greenways. And um, I also, because I was with the county... The park system, the, let's see, who was it? The Gatlinburg Hiking Club and maybe the Knoxville Hiking Club or whatever. We forged some uh, hiking trails out up at House Mountain. And I would always go up there and hike because mm-hmm. I forged that trail. I moved that rock over and I moved that, you know, uh, stream to be diverted here. And it was just really kind of cool, the whole team of us, for many, 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 many weekends back in the day. And I think that was 92. And haven't been up there lately either. Yeah, I've never been up to House Mountain. And that's Great place. A place that yeah. I think a few others have uh, mentioned or have come cool. across yeah. recently. And need to go that's, back. That's one on my bucket list mm-hmm. that I need to go out there and explore. Mm-hmm. 
Well, um, when Carrie gets a day off and you're not doing research and not working on clients, and um, what is it that you would do with your time if uh, around Knoxville, East Tennessee? Yeah, I'd probably go golfing. Yeah, and, any particular uh, course? Hiking. Like, if you had to choose one, like this is where I would go. Well, like I like Avalon. Off. I like Avalon. That's that's a really good one. Uh, I get some good scores there, and um, let's see, probably uh, Willow Creek. All right. Well, moving on to the next one. Um, what's Carrie's favorite restaurant? Wow. Local establishment. Well, I would always like to go to the Yield Steakhouse. There you go, uh, classic. Yeah, that's a good one from from years. And uh, yeah, I don't get out there much either. I was just out there a couple of weeks ago. Recommend them highly. Nice. I guess uh, you recommend a particular dish. I guess you got to go with the steak. Uh, yeah, the broccoli casserole is pretty good. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> I don't do beef so much. Okay. But yeah. Um, and then um, leaving with our listeners, um, what would you give our listeners as far as your best tip for staying healthy? Wow. Well, the basics, you know, drink your water and get your rest. Mm -hmm. And you and said earlier. Do um, your self-care. I mean, you want, you know, once you know what body part is screaming at you, Pay attention. You know, it's 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 the faster you can get after these areas of pain, the better your body's going to respond. If you wait 30 years to get your back worked on, you know, you're going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. So I have those kind of clients. You know, we kind of have to reverse what they've done to themselves all these years. I'd rather see you come in with an acute, you know, injury the same day or the next day or within the week of doing it rather than, rather than waiting or trying to medicate it yourself or take a bunch of aspirin or take a bunch of pills that are going to just, you know, mitigate the symptom. Yeah. We want to get after what is the cause of this and then go after that and then really see the body change. Sure. Yeah. Better late than never. For sure. Um, so if you're listening out there and you struggle for a while, you know, uh, there's never a better day than today. So truly. Um, well, um, how can people um, get in touch with you, Carrie, if they're interested in maybe experiencing reflexology or being part of your study? Give us your contact information. Okay. Locally, it's 865-588-1911. We're located 222 South Peters Road in the Almadium building. We've been there now for three years. In August, it'll be three years. Wow. Great location. And uh, yeah, come see us. We have body cleanse machine there too. So we do, you know, the different services and love to see you. Nice. Well, one, thanks so much, Carrie, for coming on the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast. Appreciate you sharing your wealth of knowledge here with all our community. Well, I appreciate you putting this out there because Knoxville wasn't the healthiest place when I got here and been here for a couple of years now. And I think the collective therapists and, uh, you know, people who really are caring about this issue sure. are going to step forward and you're going to be inundated with people on the show. So <laughs> thanks for doing it. Really appreciate that too. All right. Well, stay healthy, Knoxville. Thank you for tuning in to the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast, brought to you by Simply Physio. If your pain is preventing you from staying healthy and active and you'd like to avoid surgery, pain medicine, or just want to get back to doing the things you love in and around Knoxville, we offer both a free ebook and free over-the-phone consultation to help you figure out the root cause of your pain and the next best steps for resolving it. Find our ebooks online at simplypt.com slash health dash tips. There you will find ebooks for topics such as neck and shoulder pain, lower back and hip pain, knee pain, and TMJ. These quick to read reports will provide you with expert tips, tricks, and exercises to help solve your pain from the comfort of your own home. Just visit simplypt.com slash health dash tips to download your ebook and have it delivered directly to your inbox. We also offer free, no obligation phone consultations with the doctor of physical therapy to Knoxville area residents. Just call us at 865-351-0615 or visit us at simplypt.com and click the talk to a PT button on the home page to schedule a call with us. Thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time on the Stay Healthy Knoxville podcast. Pod production. 
stay humble.